Would you believe this is only a small number of the plastic skulls we have in our house? Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and you're watching another review video here on the channel. Today we are talking about Travis Baldry's Bookshops and Bone Dust. I don't have intro music. Uh, why am I pausing? I don't have any intro music. Some quick disclaimers before we start. I was sent a digital review copy of this book for free by the publisher. Nobody is paying me to talk about books except my patrons and all opinions are my own. I'm gonna keep this as spoiler free as possible. However, there will be a couple of minor spoilers for Legends and Lattes. I don't think these are the kinds of books where if you were spoiled on them, they would be bad. However, if you do want to go in knowing absolutely nothing, pause the video, come back when you've read it, we'll talk then. And I will link the story graph for the book below in case you want to check out any user-generated content warnings. I guess big one for necromancy. If necromancy isn't your thing, this book's not gonna be for you. This is a cozy, low-stakes fantasy novel that is releasing on the 9th of November, 2023. Now, for m the majority of you who are probably watching this in or around November, I'm filming this in June. So I had this very, very early. So some of these details may change, I suppose. This is an early copy. That is what happens on occasion. Everything I'm talking about is true to the manuscript that I received in June of this year. <laughs> this is the prequel to Travis Baldry's viral sensation, Legends and Lattes, which released last year. It did very well. It was originally self-published and then Tor picked it up. And as part of that, they asked if he would also write a second book. And this is that second book. Travis Baldry is an author and also an audiobook narrator. I believe he does the audiobooks for these books. I've not listened to them, so I can't comment on that. We follow the same main character as we follow in Legends and Lattes, but 20 years prior to the events of that book. Viv is still doing mercenary work. She's working with a band who are trying to track down a necromancer in the area. However, Viv is injured in battle and is sent to recover her strength in the nearby sleepy town of Merck. While not too happy about being there, Viv discovers the local rundown bookshop being run by a little ratkin named Fern. Fern could use a hand getting the bookshop back on its feet, and Viv has nothing better to do other than to maybe check out the nice dwarf Baker who lives around the corner and she decides to help out. It is a fixer-upper kind of story with the looming threat of that necromancer still definitely being there the whole time. First off, let's talk about the tone. Let's talk about the fact that this is cozy, low stakes fantasy. If that is your thing, if you like Legends and Lattes, I think you will like this. It manages to keep that same level of light, light threat, light concern, but broadly speaking, it's just a very nice, easy read. It's like a the narrative equivalent of a Hallmark movie, but better written. Sorry if you are a person who writes Hallmark movies. I do think one of the biggest selling points of this book in comparison to Legends and Lattes is that the stakes are a tiny bit higher. Where in Legends and Lattes, a lot of the threats are kind of wiped away with very easy solutions. I felt like the difficulties the characters went through, particularly on the necromancer side of things, were much more impactful and I think it made the whole book feel much more balanced. I know I had friends who didn't enjoy Legends and Lattes because it just felt like nothing mattered because everything was going to be solved. Kind of like watching the first Mamma Mia movie where you just know that everyone's going to be fine at the end so you're just chilling through the whole thing. I think in this book while it is a prequel so you do know that Viv makes it out okay, it still felt like there was tension, it still felt like there were there were stakes and threats and genuine real threats to the way that these people were living. It's another sapphic book which is obviously a win in my book. I really liked the romance elements of this story. However, what I want to talk about first is Fern the Ratkin, who is not the romantic interest of this story but is it's more of a platonic friendship building business partnership kind of relationship and it's just lovely. Fern is a sort of non-stereotypical Ratkin in that she swears and she's sort of blunt and she doesn't really know what she's doing in the bookshop at the moment she just needs to find her direction but she's really good at recommending books to people and she loves books and you can definitely tell this was written with people who love books in mind but not in an annoying way. I loved Fern, I loved her Griffith, Pot Roast who is an adorable creature if you want to see art of Pot Roast check out Travis Baldry's Twitter, so cute. Uh, I just thought it was a really lovely set of relationships in this story. Even the more antagonistic relationships, enjoyable. It's got that found family element to it, which you already know I love. I'm a real sucker for the fixer-upper kind of story for we've taken this bookshop and we've given it a fresh coat of paint and a marketing initiative and we're ready to go. I liked it in Legends and Lattes. I would say I loved it in Bookshops and Bone Dust. I think because this was really starting from a product rather than starting from scratch, which is what the cafe is, it's just so lovely. I love watching things get fixed. Organisational TV programmes, my jam. 
really good uh, and I think that that's one of the reasons I really enjoyed this book is I like a we need to try and fix this problem kind of story. <laughs> if you, like me, uh, sometimes see rundown bookshops and just think to yourself, oh, if I was in charge of this I would do so many things and I would do this and this and it would be perfect and people would come knowing full well that you will never do any of those things and also you can't change the fact that the economy is bad, this is a book for you. Full wish fulfillment, living vicariously through fantasy characters. <laughs> I also want to bring up the romance in the story. I do want to talk about it a little bit because obviously we're in a prequel. This is not a romantic relationship that makes it all the way to the second book. The second book is a different romantic story for Viv. I actually really enjoyed that. I think that was really important to include uh, and really brave actually because I think so often, especially in fantasy romance, or rather romances in fantasy, I suppose is a better way of phrasing it. There is often this idea of the one perfect person for everybody and you're sort of in limbo waiting for that person to turn up in your life and you will be completely faithful to that person. Maybe you've got an ex with a tragic backstory but no, you have your perfect person and that is the only person you will have a good relationship with and move forward with your life. And I think in this it was really more about there are people in seasons of your life that can change you and you can change each other and that can be a good thing even if it's not your one true person, here I am forever, let's walk down the aisle kind of story. Uh, and I thought that was really important to include and really lovely to feature in this book. So don't be worried that this is gonna mess up your feelings about the romantic pairing in Legends and Lattes. I just thought it was a good romance, but the focus is definitely more on Viv's relationship with Fern and the bookshop. Prequels are always a bit tricky, I think, um, mostly because you know where they go. I think in a story as low stakes as this, I think a prequel makes perfect sense and it's not gonna change anything or make anything feel undermined. It doesn't feel like you're just going, well, this whole character growth is gonna be gone by the time we get to the start of Legends and Lattes. I actually thought that we saw Viv at a really key moment and a little bit of growth. There's obviously 20 years of living before she decides to leave mercenary work. So we couldn't just get her to a point where she was realizing that mercenary work maybe wasn't the best. So I think that that journey that Viv goes on in this book definitely informs the Viv that we meet in the future, but you see it as very much a part of that journey. However, if you really don't like prequels, I guess you could either read this before reading Legends and Lattes so it would feel like more like a book one or you could not read it. That might might work also if you just don't like prequels at all. I do think there were a few bits of this book that felt like story threads that didn't really go anywhere. And I don't think it added to the story that much other than being something they could bring in to try and make the bookshop a bit better. Uh, there was an, a famous author living nearby kind of storyline that I don't feel like it did that much for my enjoyment of the story. That doesn't mean I think it was bad overall. And I don't think it's a case that the book is too long so stuff needed to be cut out but I thought it worth mentioning. Just a few things didn't quite really float my boat, I guess. Also, I've mentioned I felt like the stakes were a bit higher in this one compared to the other book, but it might still be too low stakes for you, and that's absolutely fine. If you really didn't like Legends and Lattes, I don't think that much is gonna change for you in Bookshops and Bone Dust. So other things I think you might like to read if you wanted to pick this up, or if you've read this and you want other things. Obviously, Legends and Lattes, if you haven't read it already, that's just a no-brainer. Also, Olivia Atwater's Regency Fairy Tales series is absolutely phenomenal, and I think has a lot of that similar uh, energy to it, but I do think it has higher stakes, which is good. I talk about this every time I talk about cozy fantasy, but the very secret society of irregular witches, so fantastic. I'm rereading it soon. Absolutely love it. Is my main cozy fantasy recommendation, found family, all of that good stuff. Instead of all of that, if you are not a cozy fantasy reader, just in case you watch this video anyway, here's my reward for you. I think you should read The Sword Defiant by Gareth Hanrahan. It has the same kind of feeling of Legends and Lattes of uh, mercenaries who have kind of put down their swords and are trying to move on with their lives and can't. And in this case, the stakes are incredibly high, everything's terrible and people are sad. It is not cozy fantasy, but it is really well-written fantasy. So there's that. <laughs> Also got a necromancer in it. Overall, do I think you should read this? My answer is yes, I had a great time with this. I don't think anyone should be surprised. It sounds like a book that was essentially written for me, bookshops and bone dust. Hi, hello, thank you so much. I had such a great time reading this. It was exactly what my brain needed in kind of a sea of heavy, 
weighty fantasy books. It was just exactly what I wanted at that time. I'm really looking forward to more people getting to read it as this year goes on and hopefully you read it and enjoy it too. What are your low stakes cosy fantasy recommendations or the complete opposite if you're just feeling like being contrary? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also follow me on social media. Come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all the ghosts who haunt me over on Patreon. They support the channel and in return get early access to videos, bonus content, live streams and more. They will be getting this video so early access you would not believe. <laughs> thank you so much to you for watching. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. Insert intro music here. This is technically a prequel to Travis Baldry's breakout sensation. All the words that mean buzzwords.